What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our age tutorials. Today we're going to look at a tool that I think will, you know, boost your productivity by a lot. And I was inspired to make this episode because uh, while going through studio, um, I was shocked at how many people actually didn't know this function existed in Rhino. So let's get right into it. The tool we're going to go over is called Gumball. And to enable it, all you have to do is go down here to uh, where the grid snap ortho planar are. You'll see an option that says gumball, and all we're going to do is just check that so it is uh, highlighted. And now when we select anything in Rhino, you can see that there is this uh, control that is now available for us. And just to give everybody an idea of what gumball is capable of, so you can see that I've copied that, I've made this bigger. Uh, by scaling it, I've uniformly scaled it, I've rotated it, I can move it in two different axes, I can move it in one different axis, and if I explode this so that I make it into a surface, it can also do other things that are uh, done in, the, uh, in just a surface rather than a poly surface. So I was looking at my analytics the other day and I noticed that more than 98% of everybody is not subscribed. So if you guys can help me get that number a little bit lower, that would be greatly appreciated. But without further ado, let's continue with the video. Just to demonstrate uh, what kind of things we can do with the gumball tool, I'm going to create a nice surface really quickly and we'll start here. So I'm going to delete the curve. Now. Um, the gumball tool you can see has uh, around four different controls that are the most uh, basic, four or five, give or take. Um, the first one I'm going to introduce is the most simple one where you can move. So you can see the blue arrow, the red arrow, and the green arrow that allows us to move in the Y axis, the X axis, and the Z axis. So um, if we just want to move something further up or to the left or forward, uh, according to this view, we can do that without having to uh, type the move command. Now, if we want to move this in a particular number, so for example, if we want to move this by uh, 15 units, we can simply click it one time and uh, type 15 and I'll move it exactly by 15 units. Now, this also works uh, if you guys notice that there is a little um, circle in the middle of the arrow. We can actually click this and this will actually extrude our surface. So if we want to extrude this by 15, you can see that it's made an, an uh, extrusion by 15. Uh, and you'll notice that the, the extrusion is solid. So if you do want a hollow extrusion, make sure you guys use the extrude surface or extrude uh, curve command rather than just a simple gumball. I'm going to go ahead and undo this and show everybody uh, some of the other functions. Now, of course, this uh, extrude function will also work with the other axes if you have this uh, oriented in the correct way. Now, for example, if I want to rotate this, we can also do this with, uh, with the gumball as well. So notice that there are these, um, I guess, quarter circle shapes on the side of our gumball. And what this can do is rotate it. So you can see if I hold the mouse and drag it around, it's going to rotate the shape. This is going to rotate it in the X axis and this one, the Z axis like this. So that is a rotate. We can rotate on all of these different axes and you can see that works pretty well. So I'm going to go back and make it into um, where it aligns with our axes. And the next one I'm going to introduce is our scale. So this little uh, dotted line that ends in a little square, that's our scale. Um, now you can see if I drag this, it's going to scale like that. If I hold shift, similar to any other command that we use, it's going to scale it uniformly like that. And you can see this works with uh, any of the ones that you see here. Now, if it did have a uh, kind of a depth to it, you can see that there is also one that allows us to scale downwards. Uh, sorry, there I was holding shift. But if I'm not holding shift, it allows us to basically make it taller uh, in this case. So very, very useful if we want to scale or extrude or anything like that. Now, um, just to iterate that any of these commands, if you hold it, you can freehand it. But if you click on this, so for example, if we go back to the rotate and I want to rotate this by 45 degrees, I can simply click it once, hit 45 degrees, and it will help me do that in 45 degrees. Same thing with the scale. Now the scale, uh, it goes by percentage. So if we want this to be half the size of what it is, we can type in 0 
and it'll shrink it in that um, in that axis by 0.5. If we want to do uh, uniform, again, we hold shift and then we click on this, pretend it's 0.5 again, and it's going to shrink it by half. The last one I'm going to go over is uh, this little, uh, I guess, window pane looking thing on the top here. And what this basically means is um, you can see that it has green lines and it has blue lines on it. Let me zoom in a little bit. So the green lines and the blue lines signify which axes it's going to move on. So for example, uh, this particular one here, you can see that it highlights this arrow and this arrow. That means it moves on the Y and the Z axes. So if I move this, it's going to move in the Y and X, uh, sorry, Y and Z axes. Now, if I change my camera angle a little bit, we'll be able to see some other squares pop up. So for example, this is the one that I think is most useful is the X and Y axis. So you move this in a flat plane. Uh, so we can actually drag this around and it'll help us uh, make sure that everything is nice and flat when we move it so it's not shifting in elevation. And finally, of course, the other one, we just have to change our camera angle to find it. This one will allow us to change the X and the Z axes like that. So these are all three of our kind of little window pane setting that allows us to transform it on two different axes. Now, uh, one trick that I found is super useful for things like Lumion is if you want this to be on the origin, what we can actually do is hold this and then we can just type zero. You can see there's a line that drags it. We're going to hit enter and you can see that it's going to orient it itself right at the origin of our file. Um, and this again is super useful for any programs uh, where you input the model and it's based on the reference files origin point. So to just get an idea of how powerful this tool is, we're going to take something uh, like this, which is the line work, and we're going to make it into this in the shortest amount of time possible. Um, and we're going to get started by making the upper platform here. So I already have the line work laid out. Let's say we want to move this uh, or extrude it four feet up. We're going to click this, enter in four feet. Now you're going to notice that it is going to be hollow because we've extruded a line rather than a surface. Easy to solve, we're going to type in the cap command in order to cap the top and the bottom. Now we're going to find the other line that is the top of my staircase. So I'm going to go into a wireframe view, find that curve and use the gumball tool to raise this up by four feet. So type in four feet there. Nice. Going back to the shaded viewport, we're going to make the stairs. So this is our top line. This is our bottom line. We're going to tween the curves and that'll allow us to get the different lines for the stairs. So in order to get eight stairs, which is about half a feet per tread, we're gonna need seven different lines. There they are. Um, and then we are going to select last, which is selecting what we just built. You can see that it'll select the lines that we just created. Uh, now in this step, I like to just group everything. It makes everything a lot easier to work with. Uh, and what we're gonna do is actually just have these lines kind of um, first of all, go down by six inches. Now you can avoid the step if you already know, uh, what the run of your tread is. I don't, uh, because they are arbitrary. So I'm going to have to measure what the actual run is, and it's going to be around 14.11 inches. Uh, I can go ahead and undo or keep those. It doesn't really matter, but we, what we can actually do with those, uh, which is very interesting is we can actually just extrude this. So we want it to go into the actual platform itself. We can extrude this by our 14.11 and we want it to go the same way as the arrow. And you can see it's going to make these platforms for us. Now, since we have the platforms, we can use the same command select last. It'll select everything for us. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, group these one more time. Now, this is the cool part. We can simply extrude this. It doesn't really matter how much we extrude this. It'll make the stairs for us no matter what. Um, and then we can take the bigger frame, use planar surface to create a surface, and we can actually use this surface to trim away all the different ones that we don't actually need. So here you can see it actually made us the stairs uh, without us having to go in and kind of doing the fold and drawing everything out. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead and lock this just so it's easier to work. Actually, we'll just lock everything else uh, except our little uh, extrusions here. 
So you can notice that I have these line here and we just want to provide like a kind of railing for the top platform here. Um, and so I'm going to select these at random and extrude them at random heights. So let's say these ones, I want these ones to be maybe uh, six feet. Since the platform is four feet, we know this will be taller. Uh, using again the select last command, we're going to cap every single one of these. Um, same thing with maybe the next selection. So these ones may be a little bit taller uh, at eight feet. And then we will select glass and cap. And finally, we can have these ones maybe a little bit shorter. So extrude one more time and we'll do just a nice five feet. Select last and cap. So here we have our uh, railing just like that. If we want to spice it up a little bit, uh, add a little bit of a rotation to it. Again, we can select multiple ones of these guys. Say we want these to, you know, flip uh, forward maybe uh, by five degrees. We can do that. Uh, we can also do these with some of the other ones, for example, seven degrees. And then these guys that have not been transformed, we can do like a more exaggerated 12 degrees. But always notice that it'll flip from the center point when you use the gumball tool to actually do it. Um, and there it is. So something like that, very simple, can be done in a couple minutes with the gumball tool. Okay, so if you guys have learned anything new, let me know in the comments what was the most useful from this video. Um, but until further ado, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.